Hello, good morning, and welcome to yet another edition of the MTN Business Executive Breakfast Series. Um, this series um, brings up great resources who contribute to various conversations that lead to the growth of our industries. We've had conversations on um, managing the e-commerce space. We've had conversations on um, advancing the digital space in the country. We've had conversations on building a viable technology space and so many other conversations on, the, on this platform. Today we are looking at something which is very important because pre-COVID, post-COVID, and during COVID, this industry powered the way we did things. So from the way we had education, did business, communicated, from the way we, we even had fun, it was the digital space that pushed a lot of the things we do. And these days, digital financial services are also powering the way we move money around and do business. So it's a very, very important conversation. Our topic for today is building a thriving digital ecosystem in Ghana. Building a thriving digital ecosystem in Ghana. If you follow the work of um, the businesses in this space, for example, if I should use MTN as an example, for over 25 years, MTN has been investing in all the spaces to ensure that there is the right infrastructure, there is the right technology, and the, there is the right service to push a thriving digital space. But how do we build on the gains we've made so far? And what other opportunities are in the space? That's what we are talking about today on the Business Executive Breakfast Series. My name is Kojo Akoto Boating. I am your moderator. And I have three excellent panel members who are going to help us have this particular conversation. To my immediate left is the Chief Digital Officer of MTN Ghana, Dario Bianchi. Dario, welcome to the conversation. Good morning. And in the middle, if you take me out, she is in the middle. Chief Operations Officer and Co-Founder of Super Labs, Winifred Coating. Winifred, welcome to the conversation. Thank you. And um, the last man, um, Co-Founder and CEO of Impact Hub Accra, William Senior. William, welcome to the conversation. Thank you. Now, you can join this conversation on MTN's Facebook page and YouTube. You can also join the conversation with your tweets if you have any questions, if you have any contributions. Now, at the end of the day, the most interactive person is going to walk home with a special present from MTN Ghana. And as we go along, just look on the screens. MTN always has something to give away. So just look on the screens. You might see some Richard vouchers or, or, or something. Just look on the screens. Take advantage of the surprises that come in between uh, as we have the conversation. So we are going to have a quick break. When we return from the break, we will get into the conversation of how we can build a thriving digital ecosystem in Ghana. Once again, welcome to the Business Executive Breakfast Series. This is powered by MTN Ghana. Quick break, we'll be right back. Good business means seeing the possibilities and maximizing opportunities. Making sure you have a responsive support system backs your business goals. A partner that gives you a stable platform with reliable connectivity and seamless solutions and better understands the tools required to take you to the next level. With so many moving parts in running a business, we do our best to provide you with some stability. The only kind of stability you can find with MTN Business Broadband, the fastest and most reliable internet provider in Ghana. Making sure you stay ahead and stay connected because we understand what makes your business tick. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. MTN. Welcome back. My name is Kojo Akoto Boating. I am your moderator. Interestingly, today my, my panelists, so Chief Digital Officer, Chief Operations Officer, Co-Founder and CEO, so everybody's a chief, so maybe I should just <laughs> add chief to my title. So I'm the chief moderator <laughs> for today's conversation. Uh, the topic is building a thriving digital ecosystem in Ghana. I want to start with you, um, Winifred. Um, you play in this space and you've, you've, you, you have a lot of experience in this particular space. From the work you do and your observation of the digital ecosystem, 
do you think we have the right ecosystem when it comes to um, the foundations of the ecosystem, the policies, and everything within the ecosystem? Is this the right ecosystem to play in, to drive growth and also meet consumer needs? Thanks, thanks for the question. I think uh, I would say that we've made progress from where we started. I've actually been in the space for about 20 years now in, in Ghana. And there was a time that accepting digital services and products was a very, very difficult process for anyone who was innovating in the space. Uh, but over the years, over the past five years, and especially uh, after COVID, the adoption has greatly improved because uh, one, people really didn't have an option. Two, the innovators in the space have worked very, very hard ensuring that they are able to deliver consumer needs and satisfy desires of consumers, despite the fact that we don't have everything perfect yet. Um, however, there's still a lot of progress. There's still a lot of room for development. And one of the areas that is specifically of interest to me is around funding the space. So we have actors, we have innovators, uh, we have talent, we have a population that is ready to take on these uh, services. Um, we also have good smartphone penetration. We have over 76% smartphone penetration. As at the last time I checked, we have access to internet, uh, great infrastructure, giving the work the likes of MTN and others are doing. But we don't have enough capital coming into the space to uh, fund research and development, to fund market and advertising. That is required to get the adoption needed. And then that is also needed to make sure that those who invest in the space are actually going to get returns. There's a lot of work going on, but if we're able to get capital flowing into the space as we have in other regions, it would really help the ecosystem scale and do well. Interesting. I, I remember 10 years ago, we were building a music streaming platform. In fact, there were quite a few. We had Streamio, we had Mojaka, we had Music, and our biggest challenge was monetization. So there was no plug and play monetization platform where we could just plug in. So a lot of these had to be sold to other platforms abroad, or we just had to kill it. But from your response, the foundations have been laid, so it's easy to get in, just that we don't have the capital to scale as fast as we want in this particular space. Senor, your thoughts on the ecosystem? Do we have the right one? Um, are we in a good place? Yeah. Um, I mean, the times are uh, wild, right? So maybe what I, I'll say will con be considered a hot take of some sort. Um, but on the macro level, like we had discussed previously, on the macro level, the fundamentals seem to be right um, outside of the current precarious financial uh, situation, mm -hmm. on the macro level, there are two things that are good signals that the ecosystem is thriving mm -hmm. and has growth potential. On the one side is regulation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and on that signal, the, the central player, when it comes to, say, financial services in the digital market, which is the central bank, has shown significant uh, proactivity. Um, Accra, Ghana is one of the uh, has one of the strongest regulators in terms of foresight when it comes to setting up, say, the fintech office and bringing yeah. a, a very 360 player mm -hmm. to, who understands the revolving door and is able to convene players to, to build products and also advance things. Also, in that same way, creating these like sandboxes so you can do experiments in ways that cannot affect the broader market if you were to fail. These are incredibly powerful tools. And the fact that at the macro level, players understand that it's a good indication. On the other side, if policy is about signaling, then the other piece that we've seen that is very good signaling is having a government that places this as squarely in the center of the agenda and having a key player like a vice president say that, yes, provided there's been a lot of failures, right? But if signaling is a strong indication, saying that digitization is, the, is at the heart of our uh, economic machine, that is incredibly powerful. In fact, if you're a player and you're raising capital, to be able to say that on the macro level you have um, a, a policy backing that shows that you are not going to be stifled by regulation and all of that is a powerful thing to have. Mm -hmm. So on that micro level, macro level, I'm actually quite 
pleased. So I was having a side conversation with Dario backstage just before we got here about this idea that today MTN as a player is able to be play aggregator role, mm -hmm. but also be able to connect to even competitors and engage with the ultimate goal of serving the customer at the center of it. Now, all of these things are possible because the regulator is open and it's, uh, it's quite, in mm -hmm. fact, proactively pushing for more uh, integration in the ecosystem. So these are all really great signals, um, I'll say. So as a country, we've, we've, we've sent the right signals out to the world and to ourselves that we are ready to play in the digital space. But we've had a few lapses, or a lot of lapses, depending on how you, you, you analyze the situation yes. in execution. Yes. So if we got these things right, we should, we should be in a very good place of creating an ecosystem that employs a lot of people, that creates value, that meets the needs of consumers. Dario, you, you sit here at MTN as a chief digital officer, so you see what goes on. So from digital marketing, fintech, online gaming, everything. You see the data, you see the trends. What have you observed over the years? Um, how are we doing and what trends are coming up in the space? For me, what I see in the, the digital ecosystem right now is that a lot of the key pieces are finally in place. I arrived in Ghana around almost four years ago now and I remember at the beginning when I was talking to colleagues about you know, who should develop this product, what do we do and so on. With the, the thinking is always, okay, let's talk to that company from India or from Europe. Now what I realize over time is that in Ghana we have great developers. And at the core of a digital ecosystem is you need people who know how to code, who know how to code well, and they can build great products. That's why, for example, that the next version of, of my MTN is being built right now with developers based in Ghana. So that, for me, is at the center of any of any digital ecosystem. The other key part is all around designing experiences that are engaging, that customers want to use. And again, we have great UX, UI designers in the country. I recently met a, a, a young guy, Eric, who runs a community of UX in, in Ghana. Yeah. So it's all these key components are, are in place. Another important component that we, we mentioned, of course, is mobile money and we're gonna talk about it later maybe, but anybody can now, any company, any startup can plug in with our mobile money APIs and immediately start collecting uh, money. So the issue you had about how to monetize streaming platforms now yeah. does not exist anymore because you can just plug in with the Momo APIs. I think what you all have to do, all the big players have to do is to play their part, play their part in the ecosystem, open up, becoming a platform, and also be bold with some choices. We all love um, like USSD platform. We know that USSD is, is, is giving us so many opportunities to re, you know, reach out to the unbanked, to customers who do not have a smartphone. But let's be bold now. Let's start moving also to digital because more and more people are moving to smartphone and digital. So let's start thinking about how can I move that service that I've been on USSD for 20 years? How can I put it on a website? How can I build an app around it? Because at the end, you're going to have more engagement, and then the monetization and the revenues will, will come along. Mm. Would it be fair if I say that if I look in, in, in the digital space over the past 10 years, digital financial services has, has been the most innovative and, and the biggest in the space? Um, I'm looking at digital financial services and digital marketing. They seem to be the two spaces that are really growing. And I'm coming back to you again, Dario. You sit behind the data. How are we doing with, say, e-health, um, gaming, and these other sub-industries within the digital space? How are they faring? All these, these small industries, they're all growing. We are seeing, especially around gaming, there's a lot of things that are uh, happening in that, in that space. The, the key thing is how to, be, to push a local uh, uh, ecosystem around gaming and music, uh, or how, how much we want to collaborate with you know, foreign, foreign players. But I think the, the, that ecosystem is, 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 is growing and the same applies to, to digital marketing. There are a lot of companies now that understand that you get a much better return if you invest your money on digital marketing instead of in a billboard on, uh, on, uh, on Liberation Road. The problem is that do we have the skills to do that, to do that in an efficient way to really get the best 
return, and these skills are, are coming. We are, there are more and more people who know how to do these ads. And, and then we also, as MTN, we are playing that role. We are now recently started uh, uh, selling a new product where any company, any start startup can advertise on our um, platform. Because again, we believe that advertising on our inventory can be way more efficient and provide a better return than, than using some of the traditional media. Again, it depends on the segment, of course, but there's for sure a, a better way of uh, measuring and monitoring how your investment in advertising is performing. I'll come to you, Senor, now. Um, I don't know whether it's fair to call you one of the grandfathers of uh, the hub space in the country, catalyzing growth uh, of the space and ensuring that a lot of startups have a home and the support to grow. Um, if you, in your, through your own observations and your reviews, how do you think that the hub space is, is also faring? And what are some of the opportunities and the things you must do to accelerate the growth of that particular uh, space? Uh, thanks for reminding me I'm old. Um, a lot of my thoughts on this is actually a bit contrary mm -hmm. and um, not in our self-interest. I think to kickstart this whole revolution, there was a need for what we are building, right? So first, when I think back 2011, 2010, at the height of the Africa rising, you know, all of that, the cooling, we were all drinking. Yeah. Um, and that happening at the same time when the uh, Silicon Valley was popping, right? And that global template, this idea that uh, talent is universal, it's opportunity that is it. So that essentially, everyone anywhere can build anything and usurp market, market incumbents anywhere in the world. It was a very powerful idea. It needed conveners that could give it life locally. And that was where hubs became really important. Because if the thing didn't have um, a, a physical address and people could not see, could engage with each other, it was going to, like any proper revolution, it's the ideas of people coming together and constantly talking, and also being finding to trying to find ways where the in a way the world could connect to what was happening here. Those were all really important things in those early days. In this current environment, given how much of a central thing the concept is already, the idea of hubs still being central to driving it is a bit counterintuitive, mm -hmm. right? The, 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 the thing has taken hold already. You don't need to convince anyone. It's easier today for a kid to say, mm -hmm. I'm going to be a, a, a developer than they were it was 10 years ago. You were going to be laughed off, out of your house. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, it's actually encouraged okay. because the world understands these things. So yeah, I think there has to be a new focus for what these institutions like ours do. Um, versus what they, we did in the past, right? Mm. There has to be a decentralized ecosystem where key people are doing different things and there's no real need for us to exist. We have to work our way out, out of business, mm. essentially. Currently, that evolution, what we are seeing that evolution to be is that now that we've established this as a um, legitimate option for the smartest and brightest of our economy, how can we soft land global players into our market to connect with these bright people? Right? That is the new angle we are taking. So creating that soft landing for the world to engage African, develop, uh, African uh, innovators becomes the next thing, not necessarily trying to support and train. And that thing has taken its own life. Uh, you can sit on YouTube today and learn how to write code yeah. if, you, if you're, if you're yeah. uh, disciplined. Mm -hmm. um, and you can get several support, Moringa School, all of these. So there's a decentralized ecosystem now, and I think we need to find ways to add value to that and not keep to that core of what we did a decade ago. So, so this is not the time for centralizing no. innovation. This no. is time for decentralizing. Completely. Which also means that um, we also need to invest more in having the infrastructure in place for everybody anywhere to, to, to plug into the global space. Exactly. Now, I'll come to you, Winifred. Um, in your earlier submission, you mentioned that we are growing, we are thriving, but investment is low. And I'll, I'm, I'm trying to run through some of the things we are doing on the national level uh, to drive national development. We launched Planting for Food and Jobs. We are investing a lot of money in it. We launched one district, one factory, one village, one dam. 
one, one somebody, one car. <laughs> <laughs> We've launched a lot of things. And I've not seen any, I, I may be wrong, so correct me, I've not seen any, um, any, any, any concerted effort to find funding and the capital for this particular space. And that was, that was something you alluded to, that capital is a big problem. How do we skirt around this? Beyond businesses like MTN, organizing apps challenge, um, supporting startups, beyond all these things, how do we attract the right capital into the space to drive the growth we want? Um, that's, that's quite interesting. And usually, from my experience, for any investor, or anyone who wants to fund a, a venture, what is top of mind is what is the return? Mm -hmm. What is the potential upside for me if I get into uh, this investment? Especially if I get into it early when there's no enough traction, enough proof points. So what I've seen in other markets is that they are usually a set of investors who are, who are able to come in very, very early sometimes even at the ideation stage. Yeah. Sometimes after you've uh, got at least one paying customer or paying user, or when you've received enough, uh, you have about 100 users on your platform, at least there's demonstration that they need, there's a product market fit in a way. So I think that what we need to do is to promote the ecosystem as a very attractive ecosystem because uh, why do I say so? Digital technology is one of the easy to export services mm -hmm. and, and products. Today we all use a lot of services that are developed in other markets and they are available to us. Some of them are paid, some of them are unpaid, but they are all providing convenience and really pushing progress and people are able to build on top of on top of that for other purposes. So we need to be able to position the attractiveness in terms of upside, in, uh, in future upside return on investments <coughs> to the investing community. And then we also need to encourage local investors, okay, because technology is, is quite different. If there was someone with funds, What's, why should they invest in technology? Mm -hmm. Do they understand that? You know, there was this time that filling stations were so popular. Yes. Everyone who had money in Ghana and was then center. investing in filling stations. <laughs> and then they had microfinance. There was a yes. boom in uh, and micro... And then pure water business. And, and water. <laughs> oh, has to water, you know. So why should someone who is sitting on money today looking for avenues to deploy capital consider technology as an option, mm -hmm. okay? And I would say that if, if we take what technology does <clears throat> in terms of utilization globally, technology is, in terms of the biggest uh, influences of, of, in businesses, technology has 50% of the biggest companies in the world, yeah. top global businesses, so we have um, Alphabet, Meta, <coughs> uh, Amazon, Microsoft, you can name them. And then when you come even to the social media space, we have the likes of TikTok dominating the space and growing very, very fast, faster than any other business has seen that traction. Mm -hmm. So it tells you that there's a lot of good opportunities and technology is also one of the spaces that has a lot of m &As. So m and happen quite frequently and you get returns on, on your funding uh, very easy because the market is still quite unsaturated and under, I don't want to use underdeveloped. There's a big opportunity for those who want to come in and come in early because there's definitely going to be a lot of good returns. Um, I, I don't want to go too deep, but I remember when MTN came in, started doing mobile money. I was still in banking sector then and we were one of the first banks doing um, integration to our core banking platforms <coughs> and serving the market. And it, it wasn't, it, it looked like it was a long time ago, mm -hmm. but today, mobile money penetration is, is so wide and everyone is using it as an alternative or the first thoughts when it comes to payment. But that investment had to be made. And those who saw the vision and bagged it, I'm sure today they have good returns. Yeah. So that is just the way we need to think about the whole tech space when it comes to investments. Then I, I think we need to organize maybe a conference. <laughs> I think so. Ghana 
Tech Invest Investment Conference, Conference and invite all these, um, every Ghanaian, in fact, the investor community, especially the very rich people yeah. who, who used to chase pure water business, filling station business and everything, and expose them to the opportunities in the space. You know when uh, Elon took over Twitter, somebody tweeted that Ghana's GDP is just around $40 billion, <laughs> and Elon and his people are buying Twitter for $46 billion, so Twitter's value is more than our annual GDP. <laughs> And, 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 and that really hit me hard, that if we could create the right giants in the space, <clears throat> we'll be turning around our economy and getting more returns. Let me read some messages before I come to you, Dario. Yes. Um, Na Achoy in Chroma says, what um, Senor said about Ghana rising, Africa rising, brings to mind the made in Ghana push. So we should also push made in Ghana technology and made in Ghana innovation and support them. George says that, um, Kojo, how can we expand and help millions who don't have the skills in digitalization to acquire skills to create a more buoyant ecosystem? It's a question that I, I, I'm throwing to any of you. So if you want to answer that, you can answer that when I get back to you. Now, Vincent says that promoting the digital ecosystem will help create jobs. That's true, and a lot of opportunities for the Ghanaian youth. And um, um, George again says we should encourage our local investors to invest in uh, the digital space, not just buying big cars. You are right, Miss Winifred. Somebody is throwing shade at somebody. Anyway, uh, Justice says, I'm watching live from the Upper East region. This is a very good uh, conversation, and I'm loving the submissions of your, um, of your panelists. Okay, so. A lot of the submissions also suggest that we need to collaborate effectively. Earlier, um, Dario, you were talking about some of the things that MTN is doing. And I know that over the years, Impact Hub, MTN, businesses like Superlab, other communities have tried to do a lot of things together to get us where we are. But what are some of the gaps we have in the space that we, we should tap into as soon as possible to collaborate, to drive that um, um, growth that we are looking for? So yeah, the key thing for me is, is all about collaboration. So in Ghana, I see there's many startups, many great ideas, but they are all, many are small. So when you're small, it's difficult to scale. So the key thing is to collaborate. If you can put two or three startups together that have a similar idea, then that idea can grow and scale and then can attract the right level of, uh, of investment. The other part, talking about investment, as, as Winifred stated, is make sure that you have a good product market fit. And sometimes I see startups asking for um, investment, but then they are not ready. They, don't, they can't demonstrate that they have a good product market fit. But recently I've seen some companies doing something smart, like a sort of waiting list. So you create your product, or at least the front end of your product, and then you try to you market it, you start getting a waiting list, and this is proof that actually your product is a, is a good idea. So with that, you can go to an investor and ask for, for funds. Uh, on the other hand, of course, the key players like, like MTN have to play their, their role. Uh, we still do, as you mentioned, we don't do up challenge anymore, but we do, uh, we have done in September, we've done a Momo um, hackathon where yeah. startups could collaborate, could, submit their idea on how, uh, on around Momo um, APIs. And in the next few weeks, we are gonna announce the IOBA Accelerator. IOBA is our um, super app, and the Accelerator will be an opportunity for any startup or any tech hub, actually, to uh, submit their uh, ideas for micro apps that can, uh, that can run on our platform. But the key thing for me is that, as, as MTN, our, our role right now is to become, not just to fund these activities that are important, but at the same time have, have a limited impact, is also to become a platform so that any startup can actually use our, uh, our tools, our data, and so on. So, of course, we have the Momo APIs. You're gonna hear soon about, maybe some of you heard already about um, Clinosis, that is our API marketplace. This is a great um, innovation for Ghana and for, for Africa, because MTN, in Ghana, but actually across the continent, we are gonna expose on Clinosis APIs. APIs is basically a software that, uh, for two servers or two other softwares to, to talk to each other. 
And the first one that we're going to announce pretty soon is around, is to prevent fraud. So we, we'll, um, any startups will be able to use a SIM swap verification API. If you think about it, it's a very simple API. It's just checking whether that customer did a SIM swap recently or not. Mm -hmm. And this can prevent a lot of fraud that it can happen in the fintech space. And there are many, many others that will come in the next few, uh, few, few months. And the marketplace is also going to be open for anybody who has an API that they want to publish on our marketplace. We are now testing, for example, we had a, a, an API and they reached out to us, is an X-ray API. So imagine all the health institutions in the country who maybe do not have the right skills mm -hmm. to read um, X-ray. So with this API, there will be somebody that will, will, will do that, a software, sorry, that will do that and come back with an answer. And we're gonna test now with the health institution in the next few weeks. So the marketplace, we really, the API marketplace will really be a, a key part of our strategy to really help Ghana digital ecosystem and to really make sure that we are a platform where anybody can plug in and, and then build their own business. Interesting. So let me come back to you, Winifred. Uh, there were a couple of questions. Um, how do we um, improve digital literacy in the country? to grow the human resource base of the space. Dario earlier mentioned that MTN is now using only local developers, and he also said that we, have, we really do have good developers. But as we gradually move as a country into a much more digitalized space, how do we deal with that and, 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 and train more people? Is it something we should add to our curriculum at school? From what level? Should we set up more trainings? And how do we approach it? That's, that's a topic very dear to my heart uh, because I also provide mentoring and coaching services for those who are looking to get into the tech space or transition uh, from some other domain. And um, I think for me, the, there's enough evidence that going into the tech space has advantages uh, for professionals. Currently, I know with the basic education, there's a lot of infusion of ICT education um, in the curriculum and there are lo there's a lot of opportunities to learn also because we have access to the internet so we have a lot of opportunity to learn um, on, on platforms that offer good technology trainings there's also opportunity to think about problems and use the knowledge we have received as we study to solve as, as a starting point because Technology is one of those uh, disciplines that there's a need for continuous learning. And I like to say that for those who are thinking about uh, hearing this for the first time, the opportunity to learn technology and to practice technology is not limited to only certain kinds of people. I, I know uh, Dario mentioned uh, um, front-end developers, UI UX developers. So there's a whole spectrum from highly technical to not very technical opportunities. Um, we also mentioned digital marketing. So there's application of technologies. There's actually using technology to solve problems. And there's also building technology. So depending on where you find your interest and your innate skills, there's always an opportunity to learn. And I would like to encourage uh, everyone because the future is tech. So if you are currently investing in learning other disciplines, the opportunities and prospects are getting slimmer over there. So we should all encourage, uh, for parents, encourage their children, for those in school, those in other domains, to think about how can I pick up and where can I pick up these skills in technology? Because the future is indeed technology. And we having that capability would enable us to have a thriving ecosystem. And we can even export some of these talents at the end of the day. Thank you very much, Winifred. This is the Business Executive Breakfast Series. Uh, today's topic is building a thriving digital <coughs> ecosystem in Ghana. My panelist, Dario Bianchi, Chief Digital Officer of MTN Ghana. Winifred Coating is the Chief Operations Officer and Co-Founder of Super Labs. And William Senior is Co-Founder and CEO of Impact Hub Accra. My name is Kojo Akoto Boateng. We'll be going for a quick break, but before we go for the break, um, Senor, I want you to th also think about how we can collaborate effectively to make this space work. And after the break, I'll come to each of you to give me um, um, some of the things that we should do now uh, to get us to 
the point we want to get to as a country when it comes to the digital space. For all the sub-economies, either fintech, e-health, e-education, everything digital, what are some of the things that we should do immediately to get us to the point we want to get to, to, to create that economy that actually drives national development and meets the needs of consumers? So we are going for a quick break. When we return, uh, we'll hear from Senior on collaboration. And we will also um, read a lot more of your questions and your contributions for today's series. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Redefining the norm. When we connect, everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable becomes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms. Because when we connect, being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life. Stay ahead and stay connected with MTN Business Broadband, superior internet solutions that drive your dreams. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. MTN. Welcome back. This is the Business Executive Breakfast Series brought to you by MTN Ghana. The topic is building a thriving digital ecosystem in Ghana. Now, when we put up the fastest fingers, I was trying to remember how to do this. I think that over the past like three, four years, I've not bought a voucher before. I always do Momo, but the Momo app. So I couldn't even remember um, the short code to use. That shows you how the digital space has taken over my life. For those of you who are winning, you are the true legends. <laughs> <laughs> you are a legend to win fastest finger because it means you remember your digital stuff and you remember your, your semi-analog stuff as well. So congratulations to all those mm -hmm. who won. So welcome back. Our conversation is on building a thriving global ecosystem in Ghana. Um, this is the digital ecosystem. I have William Senior, co-founder, and CEO of Impact Abakra, Winifred Coating, Chief Operations Officer and Co-Founder of Super Fruit, Fluid, Labs. Super Fruit, uh, Fluid Labs, and Dario Bianchi, of, uh, Chief Digital Officer of MTN Ghana. So, Senior, I want you to give me your thoughts on effective collaboration to scale, and mm -hmm. also add your thoughts as, uh, on what we must do immediately. Um, the vaccine we must, we must take now, to, to fight um, some of the challenges in the space and also to, to drive mm -hmm. 
uh, a faster growth of the space? The response, can, thankfully, can be rolled into one. Um, and this comes from both my experience being the first fool for the last decade, uh, finding like early stage capital for founders, and then on the other side, as a venture partner, most recently for the last three years, investing in uh, pre-seed and seed stage companies. Um, and there's one thing that I'm super convinced needs to happen right now and as quickly as possible. So to Winifred's quest conversation about how capital get deployed to uh, uh, tech startups, one of the challenges is that on the one hand, we ask founders, most, that, most often young, inexperienced, um, but with drive and passion, to do th two things that are fairly difficult on their own. First, we are saying that create a digital product that is so good that it could be seen as a billion dollar business. Now, that is in itself a ridiculous uh, 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 undertaking. Not impossible, but yeah. tough. And then on the other hand, we are saying operate on a shoestring, go to market, find a way to let users trust you who has barely nothing, that you are going to build something that is going to transcend everything and be able to blow up and become big. Now, these two things that we ask of people is already tough. So to find the right mix to make, make it happen mm -hmm. is really tough. So the, the, the trend where we build consumer products, where you have to pump mm -hmm. a, a lot of money in advertising and user awareness and acquisition, it's not going to work half the time, more than half the time. Yeah. So what I have seen work, which I'm convinced is the route to go, is to engineer user growth. That needs to happen. And that's where collaboration comes in. Mm. So if you are building a financial services mm. product, instead of trying to do Facebook ads to convince people to download your app, you have to be able to find a partner that is essentially almost taking their offline users and transferring it to you somehow so that you can use that to prove that you have, you are, you have a valuable product. Yeah. A lot of those engineering, players like MTN have broad insight and depth, and they can engineer some of those things in a way that grows their own walled garden that they currently protect beautifully, <laughs> um, but at the same time brings in more players that can enrich that walled garden. Because if you think about it, Apple's walled garden of App Store and all of these things, it's nothing if the apps in there are not great, yeah. right? So MTN's current infrastructure itself is much better if they are great apps connecting to their APIs and doing great things. So it's in MTN's interest to find players that should be working together to grow the pie so that they can all thrive. And we need to be able to find players who have 360 insights and can, can find those that need to collaborate and pair them up. So we need a bit of that engineering, and I think that is where we are failing significantly. Nigeria has figured a bit of that engineering. Today, if you start a startup in Nigeria, and you call 10 founders and said, would you be a, a user, a trial user, if it's a, if it's a B, B2B yeah. uh, product? Yes. And not just yes, a founder there will likely sign a 20K check on top of it for it for another founder. They've figured that out, that we grow together mm -hmm. if we are all kind of using each other's products, even if it's not the greatest product at the start of it. So we need to understand that. So find a way to engineer users in the early days, and also other startups, <clears throat> if it's a B2B product, should integrate first before they could try to convince um, global brands and all of these yeah. things to, to, to uh, engage. Should you also have um, a, a national policy where national procurement of digital services is made in Ghana first? For example, if you, you have a financial um, management app, for example, and you're running PFG, we've got over 3 million pharma, uh, farmers um, um, registered for PFG. We need to sign all these people up uh, to your platform because that way you acquire users easily. Is that a way to go? Or when it comes to the digital space, you just leave it for the market to in decide? In principle, in principle, mm -hmm. I am not for anything that forces the market to go into a certain direction because it's not worked 
especially in places where we know that the forces behind know how to uh, shape mm -hmm. things to meet exactly those policy settings. Mm -hmm. If you allow the market, the engineering should be done more on the market side than on the government side. Yeah. Government engineering has never truly worked. It, it, it's, it, go, it steers towards socialism of some sort and it's always some cronyism involved. Yeah. More importantly, if it's a consumer product, I want private sector players engaging, doing something that forces government to maybe change policy a bit to give to them the room. Product, right. But um, government players engineering things has never worked anywhere <clears throat> in the world. Okay, let me yeah. come to you, Winifred. Um, it's interesting, collaboration is top of my mind. So there are two places I think there's a big opportunity of we helping ourselves. So number one is collaboration, and then number two is purchasing from ourselves as, as a country. And uh, when it comes to collaboration, so for instance, I'll take ourselves. So we are into data analytics uh, space, providing consumer analytics and um, data science services to other businesses. So we are pure B2B. And one of the places we've seen a lot of good collaboration is around uh, providing credit risk assessment from alternative data. So the actors we have worked with have been in a threefold. So they are usually those who have consumers, like the farmers you mentioned, who are looking to offer them uh, inputs on credit or provide some kind of opportunities in the value chain and need capital. They have a lot of farmers who are a strong big base. So what do they do? They need to have capital for lending, but they need to do risk assessments. That is where we come in and we provide risk assessments, credit risk assessment based on farming habits, based on historical yield, based on satellite data, based on a lot of data that is available to that niche uh, portfolio. And then the other collaborators bring in capital. So in most of our relationships, it's a three-way relationship that is working very well to provide a solution to the market. So for me, I've seen collaboration as one of the key ways of making it in our market. And then the other aspect is around purchasing of what we sell, what we make here in, in Ghana. There's a lot of innovation that is going on in the space. And if we are not purchasing from ourselves, these innovators are going to stifle and they're going to die. So whenever we need technology, the first thing we should be thinking about is that, is this technology being offered by anyone indigenously? Is there an opportunity of local context <coughs> knowledge that can be applied because the developers or the innovators are within the space and they know the constraints and the peculiarities that exist in the space. So we should think about these things and also harness opportunities like the infrastructure and the platform he mentioned. Take advantage of those ones as they go to places for whenever we are looking for digital tech to help enable and grow the space for everyone. Now, um, Larry, I'll, I'll come to you for the final words, but there's this question which keeps popping up. Uh, one of the, I'm reading from Facebook, I'm talking about digital education, it's just a good question, but I remember the question, how do we enable digital education to, to thrive? He's asking this because of COVID. When COVID hits, a lot of the children in the cities were able to have some continuity in their education. A lot of children in the rural areas were, were cut off a bit. How do we enable this to thrive in this country? Dario, would you like to take that before you give us your final yeah. thoughts? Yeah, so on, on digital education is a, is a key topic. Of course, we need to do the, the basics, things like you know, coding should be part of the curricula and uh, you know, any, every kid should to know like the basic of coding because it's a way it's something that in any whatever job you're going to do especially of course you're going to if you're going to go in, into digital the basic of coding are, are are critical and they should be part of the basic um, curricula at the same time the beauty of the area we live in is that any type of training whether it's advanced basic or even yeah or basic basically can be found um, online so we, we, I, I, I'm not necessarily a, a support of big school, big things about digital mm -hmm. training. Everything today, you can go online and you can find that training. The key thing is to make sure that the basics 
are there. So in terms of what you have to, to know around, again, um, coding, make sure that there are institutions like tech hubs where in case you want to meet other people, you can go there and they can give you some coaching or, or, or mentoring or, or advice. But then for the training, everything is there and is, uh, is online. Of course, you have some basic on YouTube, but then you can go up to Udemy, Coursera, all these things where you can find all these everything from learning how to code to digital marketing, Google Ads certification, everything is available there. Mm, thank you very much, Dario. So uh, your, your, your final thoughts on what to do going forward to get us to grow as fast as we want and to create more opportunities for all of us. So the, the, the few things, one is I really like what Senya said about uh, make sure that the startups and digital companies think about how they want to grow. Basically what he mentioned was growth hacking. So going and advertise your product on Facebook or Google should be absolutely the last thing you want to do. There are many other things you can do to really demonstrate that your product has a, has a good product market fit. And even you know, going in a, in a market, hiring few young people to go and promote your product and see whether there is traction, all these things are way better than advertising on, uh, on, uh, on these California platform, let me, let me call them. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the, the other thing is, again, Senio mentioned the MTN wall garden, and I can promise that the idea is to exactly break the walls. So we don't wanna talk about wall garden. The idea is that we are now a platform that slowly is opening up. So we talk about uh, uh, Momo APIs, we have Chinosis for all the other type of APIs, we have Ioba where anybody can, if you have a, 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 an idea or a digital service, but you don't, want, you don't have the skills or the tools to build a proper app, why don't you build it as a micro app on Ioba? We, have two mil we recently celebrated two million customers on Ioba just in Ghana and almost over 15 million in, uh, in the continent. So your micro app can immediately have access to these, all these millions of customers uh, uh, from day one. Then again, we have mobile advertising and all these things, and slowly you will hear more and more we are really opening up. Okay. When we talk about then funding, I think it's, the key thing is to be innovative and look at other things. So recently I started, I look at this new company called uh, Daba Finance. It's a simple app where any startup can, can go, they collaborate with them, and then whoever wants to invest in any startup in Africa, they can start investing from $500 or even less, depending on the, on the, on the company. So there are so many new ways of raising funds, and you just need to be there and like, think out of the box and look at alternative ways. We have five more minutes to go. Um, we'll take a quick break. When we return from the break, I'll announce the WOW Moment winner. Um, I told you that the most interactive um, participant is going to win something from MTN. We'll go for a break. When we return, I'll tell you what you are winning and who is winning that. Stay with us. Good business means seeing the possibilities and maximizing opportunities. Making sure you have a responsive support system backs your business goals. A partner that gives you a stable platform with reliable connectivity and seamless solutions and better understands the tools required to take you to the next level. With so many moving parts in running a business, we do our best to provide you with some stability. The only kind of stability you can find with MTN Business Broadband, the fastest and most reliable internet provider in Ghana. Making sure you stay ahead and stay connected because we understand what makes your business tick. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. Everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable becomes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms. Because when we connect, 
being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life. Stay ahead and stay connected with MTN Business Broadband, superior internet solutions that drive your dreams. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. MTN. Commercial break. We are wrapping up the conversation here. Today's conversation has been about the ecosystem. I'll read some of your comments quickly and I'll announce the, first, uh, <coughs> the winner for our wow moment. Uh, Francisco says this conversation is enlightening and I've learned a lot. Um, or Tim Frederick says active collaboration is very, very key. Um, Zelda says MTN has been one of the best ISPs in our area in terms of broadband services. Our team would also want to have access to MTN's API so that we can integrate them into our apps. Um, Pencil says spot on William about your submission on how we can help businesses with <coughs> skill. And, um, Alfred says, Winifred, thank you very much for your uh, comments. I agree with everything you are saying. Francisco says, Ayuba has 2 million already and is growing, so people can tap into it. Kofi Akom says, I'm just hoping that what I'm watching is free and I'm not being charged for my data bundle. You are being charged. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you are being charged, Kofi. So, uh, but still, uh, you are learning new things. Now, our winner for the fastest finger going home with a brand new Samsung device, ladies and gentlemen, is Nana Ade Genius Charles from the YouTube page. Nana Ade Genius Charles from the YouTube uh, page. And his last post says, a business will grow based on the customer services, uh, financial services, <coughs> branding, advertisement, and many other factors. MTN is providing the space for all these things to thrive in the country. Uh, Nana Ade Genius Charles, you are a winner for fastest Finger. It's been a great conversation. We have just a minute, and uh, Winifred, you wanted to make um, an, uh, a, a final point on uh, the education. Yes, I, want, I was saying uh, when we're back to that we need access to the internet mm -hmm. and then we need connected devices. So if we, we are thinking of those who are not in the urban centers, <coughs> we need to think of how do we get them connectivity and then how do we get them devices. So that should be the question on our mind. And for those who are playing in the space of connectivity, like what the kind of backbone MTN is providing for internet connectivity, that should be promoted. And we should also think about how can we make connectivity a basic right for everyone who lives in Ghana? Affordable internet connectivity and then having access to devices. Okay, so we, we need to ensure internet connectivity is affordable and available <coughs> and devices are also available for these children to tap into. So we, we would need to have more smart classrooms and probably senior would, would catalyze the growth of a business that makes devices in the country and more affordable devices that we can all tap into. <laughs> it's been a good conversation um, I'm, and, and I've personally learned a lot from the three of you. William Senior, co-founder and CEO of Impact Abakra. Winifred Coating, Chief Operations Officer and Co-Founder of Superfluid Labs, and Dario Bianchi, Chief Digital Officer of MTN Ghana. I'm also the Chief Moderator <laughs> for the Business Executive Breakfast Series. My name is Kojo Akuto Bwating. Please help me thank our panelists for their insights today. William, thank you. Winifred, thank you. And Dario, thank, thank you. you. And thank you too for watching. It's been the MTN Business Executive Breakfast Series. Mm -hmm. um, we hope you've learned something new. And we are here, MTN is here to work with you uh, to grow the digital space. So let's work together. Let's put our shoulders to the wheel. Let's create opportunities for all ourselves and grow our economy. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you enjoyed this conversation, please do share the link in your Ioba spaces and on your Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever, so that others who miss this conversation can also um, watch later and tap into the insights. Thank you. Enjoy your day. We'll meet some other time. When we connect, everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable becomes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms.
Because when we connect, being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life. Stay ahead and stay connected with MTN Business Broadband, superior internet solutions that drive your dreams. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. MTN. Good business means seeing the possibilities and maximizing opportunities. Making sure you have a responsive support system backs your business goals. A partner that gives you a stable platform with reliable connectivity and seamless solutions and better understands the tools required to take you to the next level. With so many moving parts in running a business, we do our best to provide you with some stability. The only kind of stability you can find with MTN Business Broadband, the fastest and most reliable internet provider in Ghana. Making sure you stay ahead and stay connected because we understand what makes your business tick. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244 308 111.